Hi, this is Daniel Moix, Computer Science Education Specialist at ASMSA. Today I'd like to look at question number 17 from the ETS uh, Praxis Study Guide for Computer Science. And the question asks you to evaluate this procedure calc uh, when you're running it against the values 5 and 6 stored in variables A and B. Some of you who have taught computer science in Java for a long time may be unfamiliar with pass by value versus pass by reference. C and C++ teachers have, have covered this for a long time. Or maybe you're brand new to computer science and this all looks like Greek. I want to help you figure out how to unroll this question in questions of this type. So uh, let's just read the question. Consider the following pseudocode procedure calc, where the first and second parameters are passed by value and the third and fourth parameters are passed by reference. That is, actual parameters passed to formal parameters w and x are passed by value, while those passed to formal parameters y and z are passed by reference. That probably makes no sense, so let's look at a simpler problem. Here's a simpler problem. Procedure calc just takes two parameters. It takes parameter w, which is passed by value, it takes parameter x, which is passed by value, and it does these things with that. So in the darker box, the procedure is defined. In the lighter box, we're going to call that procedure. So we would create a variable a and store it at the, var the value 3, create a variable b and store it at the value 5, and then we're going to call that procedure passing at the values a and b, which are 3 and 5. Over uh, here you can see when I'm calling a procedure, the order in which I pass my values uh, applies. So since A comes first, A is assigned to W because W is the first parameter in the procedure. And B is comes second, so B goes to the second parameter in the procedure. So what that looks like um, in, in I guess my scratch paper, which is this darkest box here, is I have, I have variable A and I've assigned it to value 3. I have the variable B and I've assigned it to value 5. When I call calc passing it a and b, because these are passed by value, the value 3, which is a, is copied over into w. And the value for b, which is 5, is copied over into x. When you're doing pass by value, the originals a and b are not changed, and the copies w and x are. So let's, let's follow this procedure. The line says to create a z variable and to put in that z variable the value from w. So we created a z and we looked in w and saw that w contained 3 and we copied that 3 over into z. The next line says take whatever's in x and put it in w. Take what's in x which is 5 and put it in w. So putting something else in w overwrites what had been in w. So the value x overwrites the 3, and so now w and x both contain the value 5. That doesn't change a and, B e, a and b's value, because w and x are copies of what were in a and b. Finally, the procedure says to take what's in z and put it in x. So we take what's in z, which is 3, overwriting the 5 that was in x with a new value 3. So the procedure ends, and the question was, what is the value of a and b after calc a, b? Well, the value of a, b remains unchanged. It's 3 and 5. All of the changing happened down here in the bottom, not up in the top. OK, let's look at a slightly different problem. It's all the same except pass by value has been replaced by pass by reference. And in pass by reference, instead of copying a value into w, we make W point back down to A. We make W say, oh, you need you, that's not me. You need to go see A for that answer. Passing by reference does the same thing for X. Instead of passing a value in, X simply refers you back to B for that answer. So here's our, our scratch paper. We start out with A being assigned the value 3, B being assigned the value 5. Now when I call calc A and B, W is just a reference back to A and x is a reference back to b. So whenever I'm asked what is the value of w, well I go look at a and find that it's 3. Whenever I'm said set the value of x, I actually go up to b and change the value of b up there. So let's follow this code. It says int z is assigned the value from w. So there's our int z. What is the value from w? 
Well, I have to go look in A and find out that it's 3. So Z gets the value 3. The next line says assign X into W. Take the value from X and put it in W. So X's value, well, X points to B, so X's value is 5. And we're going to put that in W. Well, W is a reference to A, so we're going to put that 5 in A, overwriting the 3 that had been there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that value Z, well, Z's value is 3, and we're going to assign it into the variable X, but X is really B, so we're going to take that 3 and put it in B. And that's how pass by reference works. Pass by reference is uh, pointing you back up to the, to the place where you'd come from. So let's look at a third baby step before we get back to the real problem. This one has a mixture of pass by value and pass by reference. W is pass by value, which means we just make a copy. X is pass by reference, which means we refer back to it. So when I go and set up my scratch paper, A gets the value 3, B gets the value 5, W gets a copy of A, which is 3, and X gets a reference to B, which will be dereferenced later. So we're going to create our int Z and assign that Z the value that's in W. Well, W is 3, so we're going to set Z to 3. The next one says take what's in X. Well, what is in X? X points to B, so X contains a value 5. And we're going to put that in W. So we override the 3, and we put the 5 in W. Lastly, we're going to take what's in Z, and what's in Z is 3. And we're going to assign that to X, which really points to B. So we're going to put that 3 in B. And the answer to the question, what is the value of A and B after calc AB? Right now, A and B are both 3. And the reason B changed is because we passed it by reference and not by value. A remains unchanged because we passed it by value and not by reference. If you need to pause right here and review some of these concepts before we move on to a more challenging problem, now is the time to do so. So looking again at this kind of problem, we see that W and X are passed by value, meaning that the values of W and X will remain unchanged, and that Y and Z are passed by reference. So if you want to, take a moment and try to work this on paper before you move on in the video to see the solution. So I've just copied the, uh, the problem over in, into my presentation software so it's easier for me to manage. And what does our scratch paper look like? Well, we have A and B, which are 5 and 6. And then we're calling calc A, A, B, B for values W, X, Y, and Z. Because A has a value of 5 and it's being passed by value into W, we simply copy a 5 down into W. Because B, or because A is passed by value again into X, we're going to copy another 5 into X. Because Y is getting the value for B, we're going to pass a reference to B into Y. And Z is also getting a reference to B. So Y and Z actually point to the same place, which is letter B. W and X have two copies, each of their own copy, of the value 5 that came from A. So let's do these four lines of code. The first one says add 1 to W and store it back into W. So 5 becomes 6. The next line says double the value that's in X. So X was 5, now it's 10. The third line says go to Y, which is really B, and add 3 to it and store it back in Y, which is really B. So that 6 becomes a 9. And the fourth line says go to the letter Z, which is also B, and quadruple it. 4 times 9 is 36, and we store that value for 36 back into z, which is really b. So b gets the value 36. So the final answer here is that a has a value 5, and b has the value 36. You use your understanding of pass by value, pass by reference, as well as your understanding of assignment operators, simple arithmetic, and, uh, and, and calling procedures.